or welcome back to another episode of Bailiwick Fishing. Now you're going to see me talking in the video but unfortunately the wind noise was a little too strong to play back on uh, for you guys to watch. So you'll see me there setting up, we're going to do a spot of bass fishing, I'm on a west coast location and uh, the rod I'm going to be using today is a 11 foot pen regiment 2, it's my trusty rod and I really enjoy using it. It's a spinning rod, exactly what sort of fishing we're going to be using uh, doing today is what it's meant for you'll see me using it in the boat and as it happens when you're going to be watching this video i'm actually going out today and i'll be using it in the boat it's great fun for the mackerel but anyway we're going to start off with this um some soft laws i'll show you in a minute the laws um i've got a pen pursuit 4000 fixed spool reel with 20 pound mono line and a clip at the top there you go there's the reel there now these pen reels are really, really good. It's probably one of my favourite reels, to be honest with you. Nice and light, and it seems to be quite robust. And there you go, there's the pen measurement rod. If you haven't got one of these rods, I think the newer versions are out. You see the scales there? Because that rod's caught plenty of fish. Now here we go. That's the location. So the cause where you'll see is just in front. I'm just getting out some laws. And the laws I'm going to start with is the surface laws so some of you will recognize that as the pachinko uh, one of my favorite laws are most successful and you can see i'm pointing to the ball bearing that's in the back that creates noise and rattles in the water or well, the top of the circle on the surface should we say and uh, hopefully attracts the bass now it's an overcast day which is great conditions for bass where you don't want to be to be too uh too sunny and uh, you also want a bit of chop in the water just to stir things up so you can see I've got two boxes with me today. This box here is full of the hard laws, surface laws and the divers. And the other box just to the left of me where the rod is, is the soft laws, which we might go on. But while it's shallower water, we tend to stick with the surface. So here you go. Here's a show of the soft laws. So you can see me here. I'm holding the weedless law. Um, very good for conditions um, when there's a lot around. There you go, there's a little mackerel sidewinder, another kind of sidewinder, the scary. You can see the scary next to me on the wall with the blue stripe, that was a very popular in 2021. And that last one was a sidewinder or Savage Gear V2, I think it is. Savage Gear. So I'm gonna go now get the rod ready. As I say, I've got a clip swivel on the uh, top of the main line, easy access for the. Um, laws to swap and change so i'm going to put that savage gear on firstly there's the clip swivel you'll see me going to tie a half blood knot which is a simple knot but very effective for fishing now what you do firstly is put the line through the eye of the swivel bring back to yourself well with one hand and the other one you're holding and you'll just see me start to twist the line like so and you can do as many twists as you want four five six um, the only thing I fail to do on this one, and I usually do it, is put some saliva on the knot just to lubricate it to stop any friction. And there you go, you can see me tucking. Now you can see here, I'm just tying on the clip swivel onto the main line. So what I'm doing is spinning that through the eye of the swivel, spinning it round, tucking it back through, and that's what we call a half blood knot. They're very strong knots. So here's the slip, you can see a surfer going down there. There's masses of surf comes up with the tide coming up over the back. No sandy beaches here. So we're gonna just progress down over the rocks. So I'll just give you a bit of information about this mark. This mark here um, is all pretty much this sort of ground. And just to the, where my rod tip is here, it all slopes off into a quite a deep gully. So we're going to be casting into a gully. We're going to walk as far as we can up there. And then we're going to slowly fish along here. And we go back up there. Now, can anyone spot what the danger is here? The danger is right in front of the rod tip. Because that water is up there already. And the water also comes from around the back. You can see that surfer just in the distance around there. And while you're fishing up here, the water is coming around the back of you up there. So you need to be very, very careful. So this is marks like this, that if you don't know the mark, don't go to it alone. Always go with someone experienced. And uh, 
you need to be uh, allow a lot of time to get off the mark um, you never know you might slip hurt yourself and need a bit more time to get get back to safety but always tell people where you're going as well before I left I told my, the person at home exactly where I was going and the time that I was going to hopefully be returning so uh, always have that about you my mobile phone is fully charged it's in my pocket okay so we're going to go up for the first cast of the day now if you don't get wet feet when you're bass fishing you're not doing it properly <laughs> Here we go, first cast. About 60 foot in front of us. So all we're doing for the surface law is real twitch, real twitch. And all you wanna do is put a bit of pause in as well at the same time. And basically mimic a bit, uh, a, you know, a bait fish that's in distress on the surface. And that's when you get the bass that come up for it and take, uh, take care of it. Oh, loads of sprats jumping around on the top of the water here. Oh, fish on guys, first cast. Check this. I saw the sprats jumping out. I think it's a little schoolie. First cast tiny little bass so yeah that i think tiny little bass but it's a fish there's no blank check that guys get rid of that seaweed for you oh and he's gone <laughs> sorry guys but anyway you saw the fish let's try and get another one that's a great start first cast we've been here two minutes okay well welcome back to bailiwick fishing i hope you enjoyed part one where we had that small bass uh, off the shore we're back in the boat today, Sarah's with me. We're gonna go and pull some crab pots. So we're using, once again, the SCAD. We're still using them, The way uh, we're still getting our way through those. If you're still watching the video and you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button. A bit of a tongue twister, that is. The subscribe button, and uh, that really helps the channel out. Also like it, check us out on TikTok, and again, check us out on Instagram as well, Bailiwick Fishing. There's gonna be plenty to come on the uh, TikTok one. I just need to know how to use it. Sarah's uh, a bit better than I am. And feel free to share any videos with your friends. There you go. Feel free to share any videos with your friends. So tonight is half tied up. Well, we're just waiting for the gate to open. Um, I can see it down there. We're, we're a little bit early. We're going to get the boat set up. We're going to do 12 pots tonight. They were baited nicely. So I'm hopeful. It'd be nice to see a lobster come out of them today. Anyway, we're going to get down to the boat. We'll see you out there. Sarah's kindly pointed out that she spotted some fish in the marina and uh, I've just informed her there's going to be some mullet so if we're nice and quiet we'll hopefully give you a show. There you go. I don't know if you can pick them up underwater. Probably not. There's a shoal of, what, a dozen? Oh yeah, quite big. Yeah. So, oh, mullet guys, they feed off um, the bottoms of the boats, the algae, and uh, if you want to catch them, a good thing is to uh, try some bread. A lot of people fish for them off here. So this is a flat platform here is a drying up platform where well, you can see there's those boats there. But a lot of people, when that water comes over, um, the fish tend to fish uh, feed up there. Sarah's making her way down to the boat. There she is, guys, there's Orkney Lass. I haven't been down here for a week because we've been away to Devon in England at a show, which was a county show. Look at that sun. 
see if his mullet come past. Right, so as I showed you in the last video, some people on this will have seen all this before, but others will not have, because it'll be your first time watching the video. So these are the boots that I use on the boat. Team Bass Wellies, studs on the bottom. Uh, they're not great actually on the, the deck of the boat, because they can scratch it up, but I've scuffed out the, uh, the studs, so they're nice. But they're really strong wellies, and they provide me with a lot of grip. I've got quite a few bibs and braces or whatever you want to call it, skins, you name it. But this one here to, that I'm using currently is the Alka Fishing Extreme. You can get them from Mix Fishing Supplies for about 50 quid, I believe. And I'll use the shower gloves, which I wouldn't say that they're that great. They're not very grippy. So that's what I use there. Um, the rest of my stuff on my boat, again, some of you haven't watched it, so I'm going to show you. So this here is the main engine, which is a 50 horsepower 2021 Evinrude E-Tech electronic um, fuel injection. There is a GoPro mount there, so we might put that in this video today. Here is the Tahatsu four stroke six horsepower. That is my backup engine. This here is my fuel filter for these both of these engines. And underneath here, which I'll show you, is my fuel tanks 25 liters in this one 25 liters in that one there's one of my batteries there the other battery is just inside here so i've got a compass here i've got my main garmin plot chart plotter here got my vhf radio in here my life jackets are just in tucked in there and up here i have a fish finder my little my little strike finder and my other backup GPS. Now this is one this is one um, piece of equipment that I wouldn't actually say I rely on too much and that's the fish finder. Some of you may ask why not? Because nature's best fish finder is the seagulls. So next time you're out, if you see some seagulls, get your rods in the water. Okay. Uh, <coughs> spinach. I think fuel costs a lot, eh? It's like two pounds worth on the floor. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do a question for Sarah here. I haven't told her anything. It's going to be a spontaneous question. Are you worried? Yeah, I don't know much about baiting. She doesn't know or much fishing. about baiting or fishing. So here we go. What side are you stood on of the boat? The left hand side. Correct. <laughs> and what side is that called in maritime? Port. Port, correct. Now what side am I stood on? Starboard. There we go. You learn something new every day. Okay, so first set of pots tonight. Let's see if we can get them first time. Not gonna miss them. Nope, not tonight. <laughs> so they've been down for since a week ago Sunday. A week ago Sunday, yeah, okay. So they've been week down a while. Two days. We've been on a holiday, so we haven't checked them. Not to say anyone else has. That's the usual story, isn't it? haven't checked them. So we're in about 40 foot of water at the moment. 
There isn't much tide because it's half tied up, slack water. So it's an easy pull. I won't be saying that on the last one today. I enjoy the exercise. of seaweed. Can you see a crab pot or is it just seaweed? <laughs> that is big seaweed. That is big. Definitely felt the pot. Coming out of season now, so there shouldn't be too many of those. Second pot is up. Oh, a few spider crabs in this one. They would be saying that they're going. Well, they are going. One, two, you won't really get any more of the smaller crabs. We'll give you a shove in the pot. There you go. Three, four, five, six. Oh look at that! Look at the um, look at the coloration on that, on that there. Like a fossil. You want, mate? Off you go. One, two, three, four. You can see what sort of uh, terrain we're in. Eel grass. That's Bream's favourite uh, coverage. That you get a lot of that around Fermain Bay for you Guernsey people watching this. Maybe not growing legs yet. Uh, they've they fallen off. Probably fallen off, but they do regrow. Lots of babies. Next year's? Next year's, yeah, they all go out to sea and come back again next year for breeding. If you just put the bait in reverse for me, I'll bait these up. a closer view of the scad that we're using um, it's horse mackerel quite a spiny fish you hear that they got spines that go that way but they're fine that way so if you're handling them just be careful of that I've got three here but I'll actually be using four two in each pot and I've showed you how to band them before and for those of you that don't know you put the pull the string on the side and tuck it under the bait band and let go just like so do the same for the other side. Okay. Uno. All I did there was straighten up the boat. Over. Okay, so this is the single pot which we're coming to now. I was just saying to Sarah a minute ago, I might sell my boat because uh, if I go on other people's I can pull my pots at the same time because they're right on top of all mine. <laughs> oh dear. Look at the sea, how big it is. Okay. Single pot is not. Single pot, reveal yourself. What a crap. And that's another spider crab. Nothing too exciting in that one. Let's hope the rest are better. That is heavily baited. Next time. Okay, so my duck hand wants to do some more pulling putts. She's got the guns out, here she goes. One approach. We're on approach. Here we are. We're just alongside. 
There's a bit of tide here actually now, so good luck pulling these. <laughs> you got it? <laughs> Let me know if you need any help, all right? So kind. No gloves, look at this. You could have cleaned the rope for me. There you are. I, I do have some gloves on and I did offer them, but... You did not Oh, did I not? Those. Oh, do you want them? <laughs> look at your nails, look, the blue nails. What I'm going to do is I'll help you out. I'll put the boat up tight. I definitely need some... Uh... She's soaked. I'm going to have to get some skin struck. <laughs> Hot pink. Hot pink skins. What do you reckon? Comment in the like. If what, what, uh, comment what you reckon she should be wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, don't comment. <laughs> that's, a bad, that's a bad thing. <laughs> You're always guaranteed a laugh with us on this boat. Very thin rope. Yeah, it is. At least you've got a bit more grip now. You've probably pulled 30 foot up. How much is that? Uh, mm, probably 65, 70 foot, I suppose. Here we go. So first pot's up. What's she got in her pots? Probably more than I've got in the, mine. Do you find this, this the, is the hard bit. Is this the hardest part, yeah? Yeah. Let's hope you've got a lobster in there. Getting it over the side. Nothing in your first pot. Blame the skipper. Oh. Blame the skipper for the last time we put them down. If you just put it to the left side yet, yeah, and you've got your next one to pull. Look at the sun between the trees. This is what we do in the summer months. We got the horses to go and do when we get back as again. Crystal clear though, look. Is it easier when I go up the tide? Yeah, that was much easier then. <laughs> it's because you're pulling the slack in between the pots. Oh, here's the second pot. Look at that. Come on. Oh, I see some spiders. <laughs> oh. There we go. I gave lots her up. Lots of spiders. Lots around. of spider crabs. So if you. Look at those. One. Maybe. <laughs> there you are, Two. look at the door. Three that one's full of eggs. We'll just show you this one, oh, look yeah. at this. Very fat girl. Look at that, full of eggs in there. So back they go. And this one. And that one, loads of females. This one's quite big actually. Is it gripping on? Female. Loads of females in this one. There's one behind you. Is there? Here we go. Another female. And another female. So this pot is loaded up with the females. The men have gone. I know there's a male. Male. The big one. The male. He's holding on. You see how they bend their claws to try and get you? Yeah, you need to. Uh, <laughs> What you do is when they start, when you start getting it off, you grab them. Look, see that? It's quite big. Yeah, is it? Too small. Too small. Look at that. In the back of the sunlight, nice backdrop. Oh, that one, tiny one, <laughs> full of eggs. Yeah. Um, what about your escapees? We have two more in here. I won't be able to get out. <sighs> you gonna try? You have to get those out. Okay. Sarah's gonna take the camera. It's off. It's not. Screens on. What's got that? What's on that one? It's like resin, look. Yeah, somebody's marked it. Weird. Never seen that before. And then this one here. Missing a couple of claws here and there. Bye bye. Boom. Do you want to have a go at baiting them? Okay. Right. There's the bait. It's spiky. They are spiky yet, so just take one at a time. Big fish. Big scad. There we go. Under here. Oh no, we have a baby still in here. Oh, there's another one in there, is it? Right, get him. You can grab him out. Tiny one. Look at those little claws. Yeah, you'll say oh. that tiny. Okay. Under here. Yep. So underneath the pot neck. That's it. 
and let go. Perfect. There you go. You can chuck them out as well. We can do the whole lot. It's now called Sarah's Pots. Sarah's Pots. <laughs> First pot. What's the most important thing to watch here? The rope. Correct. Unless you want to go for a swim and never be seen again. There we go. So Sarah's pulled, taken the crabs out, baited up, and paid her first. Who's good at dot to dot? If you are, you could probably join up where the pots are around here. There are so many. How many was around here when we came here, Sarah? A couple of months ago, what? Not many at all. <laughs> no. Single figures. As soon as we put it on YouTube, <laughs> there's a lot. So we're at the Lucky Lobster Pot. Did that take a bit of pulling, that one? It did. Nothing. hole in this part. There's a claw. Yeah. Yeah, we need to do some pot repairs to this one because one of my sash weights has come out. So seven and eight. Another female, a male, 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 female, oh, golly, big pouch. That. That's the future. One's pulling out the hole we got at the bottom of the pot. <laughs> Surprise, there's anything in these. So it's just spider crabs after spider crabs. Not many brown crabs around this close inshore. He hasn't got many claws this one, look at this. Uh, legs, sorry, not claws. Got big claws. Yeah. Mm. One, two, three, four missing. <laughs> See you later. Okay, so we're at the penultimate set of pots. Some rowers just over the bow of the boat. A double row. And the second pot is up with another three spiders, four spider crabs. So they're gonna go straight back. It's getting warm, hope we've got a drink in the van. Perfect view of the thatch cottage up there and the Ozan steps. Two thatched houses and a little thatch hideout on the left. Very expensive properties up there. Thank Millions you. of pounds. Look at the view you're getting every morning. Sunrise, beautiful. Okay, so this pot here is right in amongst the rocks. I can actually see the bottom over there, very clearly. So, let's hopefully see if we can finish the trip on a high. What bird's that making a noise? So we've got some girls making a racket, but there's also, if you listen carefully. That's our oyster catchers. So they were uh, black and white birds. With, orange uh, beaks. Orange beaks, but while we're chatting like that, I've got the first pot up. But he's having a right fit, that bird. Oh, I've just seen a lobster. Is it into size now? Oh, I've seen a lobster. I see some. I heard it. There's one in there. We'll get it out in a sec. Of the day. 
We have a spider crab and a few more spider crabs. We have a load of spider crabs. Massive pouch on that one there. Yeah. One, two. Oh, that one. That one's been attacked. Oh no, it's just a shell. Empty shell. Look at that one's half decent. The others have eaten its friend. Right, please be a keeper lobster. We're due one. No, too small. Ah, next time. Tiny lobster. With one claw. With one claw. There's a close up. <laughs> trying to get Sarah's finger. We're going to get a release of this one, so I'll stick him over the side of the oh, boat. Oh, his claws growing back. Yeah, he's look, there you go, look at that. Tiny. Good spot, Sarah. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about claws, nearly had him. So you see that claw, it's just like jelly. It's almost uh, soft. He's trying to pinch the, the uh, GoPro. We're going to let him go back. See if he shoots back down. There he is, look. Underneath the boat. Beautiful. And then it's just a complete carpet of spider crabs. So no keeper lobster this trip, but never mind. What a beautiful evening to be out on anyway. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this trip. We've had obviously the bass in part one. It was only a small one. Unfortunately, it got away from me before I could get it up to give you a show. But it was on the surface laws and uh, it's a lovely way to catch fish. We then came out in the boat as we are now and we did the crab pots. We had that small lobster, which didn't quite make the grade and loads of spider crabs, which are kind of going out now. But anyway, usually we'd end the video when we get back ashore, but both me and Sarah agreed while we were coming back, we thought we'd finish the video with this. So as I turn the boat, I'm gonna say a big thanks to you. Make sure you click the like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you check out TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Here you go, guys. Thanks for watching.